Okay, we're talking about self-doubt and our bonus topic, Patreon Special Edition. Uh, again, if you're a Patreon um, supporter, we thank you for your support. And if you're listening to this uh, after the fact, hey, we thank you for your support for listening anyways. Uh, but again, if you want to support the show, if you're not already a Patreon uh, supporter, please go to patreon.com slash around the lens and throw us a buck. All right, uh, that's pretty much all we're asking for. So, anyways, bonus topic. Uh, so, F Stoppers put out a pretty good article about uh, self doubt, and you know the basic thing is, you know, we go out and you know we photograph and we think we're doing stuff, we think we're making a difference, we think we're photographing stuff that's good, but then of course, you know, maybe that seed of self doubt comes in where we're, we're we don't think uh, we're as good as we we think we are, or, you know, maybe we don't experience this now, but maybe we experienced this, you know, in the past. Uh, but, you know, basically where you go out and you just, you know, maybe you're you're photographing and you're not as good as you think you are. I think you're sort of, you know, a fraud in a sense, or, you know, your confidence isn't up there. So, you know, what I want to ask you is, have you ever felt this going out and doing a photo shoot? Have you ever felt self-doubt? Um, you know, how did you overcome it if you did? You know, is it normal for you or is it normal in general? Um, and, you know, how much does, does confidence play in what we do? Or uh, how much confidence should we have? Uh, but let's go ahead and start with the, the self-doubt question. Has anybody ever felt that or experienced that, um, you know, while they were doing out and doing shooting? Almost every day. <laughs> I mean, in, in <laughs> there there are plenty of days where I feel like I'm just like, some guy pretending to be a photojournalist who works at a newspaper. <laughs> like somebody <laughs> like, pays I, me for this? Yeah, Seriously? You, I, I, I know do this for a living. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and and yeah, it's I mean to some degree it's alleviated a little bit by by working at a daily newspaper. Like when I, yep. it it happens to be so much more when I freelance, especially if it's with a client that I've never worked with before. You know, like well. <laughs> what's going to happen if I go out and I get some? Fo I deliver photos to these people, and they're just so unhappy with. What is this? Like, like I, I'm still, I'm always waiting. Anytime, like I, I, I just signed with a new wire service, and and I'm just waiting for like my. I just did my first upload, and I'm like, even though I've had photos bought from everywhere, and I've been with three other wire services, and kind of kept working up. Hopefully, I consider it working up. And I'm still waiting for that editor to go. What the? What? What is? What? No! 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 Your contract. Goodbye. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I. But at the same time, I think that that sort of self doubt is is a great motivator for success too. Yeah. Like I, I think the fact that I'm constantly thinking about, well, what? How can I? How can I do this better? How can I get the better photo? How can I? How can I? make something here and get something that's going to make them happy is is just a huge motivator. Um, the more worried I am about failure, the, usually the harder I work and the better the better stuff I deliver. So yeah. have you ever gone out on a shoot and just come back and there was really nothing or you could it was oh, kinda yeah. <laughs> It's um, so so. We're unfortunately we're one of those papers that doesn't really have a photo editor anymore. Uh, but we did once upon a time when I was so I interned here before I came back as a staffer. And when I was an intern, I went out and I I shot photos of photos of a guy jogging along the side of a highway. And it was, it was there's an actual story there that he was running some long distance for veterans, and. Uh, so you know, I, I, I at the time I had a bad habit of tilting my horizons, and uh, the touch uh, in, angle yeah, yeah, intentionally yeah. tilting my horizons, not like a, and so I kind of did that from a from a perpendicular point of view towards him to kind of try to make the photo the boring photo more interesting. And my editor my editor looked at it and he said, "Did did you tilt that horizon on purpose?" And I said, "Yeah." And he said, "You." You were trying to make chicken shit into chicken salad, <laughs> but it's still just chicken shit. Um, so yeah, I mean that that kind of stuff happens, and especially when I was when I, I mean I feel like well I'm always learning, but when I was really really new to this, um, it it would happen more. But yeah, it's it, it's a bad feeling when you when you come back and you you don't you come back from an assignment you didn't really deliver. Or maybe you just really didn't try very hard, and and your you know your editor can tell when you kind of just like phoned it in 
they I mean they can tell. They know what you're capable of and they know when you're not delivering. Um but it it feels it feels bad and in, in a lot of ways that's a motivator too to to work harder to yeah. Yeah, I haven't been in a position where people expect me to provide, you know, photographic services so much. I mean, I did actually I shouldn't I should say, you know, I haven't been in a position, been in a position where people of like high photographic caliber have expected things of me. I've been, you know, expected to produce stuff for customers who, you know, weren't photographers and they just want imagery. And, you know, I always again, I, I did my best. I always try my best. And, you know, there's sometimes where, you know, you get great stuff and sometimes where you get garbage. And, you know, I think where that self doubt comes from, at least for me, is whenever I've tried to get something uh, I've, I've tried to get a shot or an image, and then I come back and it's like it's garbage, or it didn't come out, you know, it didn't turn out well when I was trying to shoot it, and then I come back and it's like out of focus or something like that, and it's basically like, well, where's that? There's that great image you hoped you had gotten, and now it's gotten. And then of course that seeps into you doing your work and thinking, well, I mean, what kind of photographer am I if I can't even get a simple shot like that? You know, it's in focus, you know, where it's like I'm focusing on the, the wrong aspect of the the image, you know. So those, you know, whenever you, you know, do bad work, that always gets back to you and eats away at you. We can always just, uh, if you get, you do bad work, you just throw it in black and white and up the contrast. <laughs> sharpen, <laughs> sharpen, turn that sharpen dial all the way to the right. That's, it's actually, you know, it's funny. You were just talking about that, and it just was like, wow. Um, becoming a photo, like when I started, I went to art photography school at SU, and I uh, went to art film school as well. And you could kind of like BS anything you wanted and like make a photo that was like a po literally I took I remember I have a photo of a tree stump that I took on Syracuse College campus and I don't remember what sort of BS I tried to give my give my professor who luckily Laura Heyman was amazing uh, she let me do whatever the hell I wanted still somehow passed me um, but uh, now that I, now that I'm a photojournalist um, and all of those all of those uh, saving tools have fallen away like you can't throw filters on crap you can't just up the contrast unless of course you're applying for world press photo awards or anything like that then you can <laughs> oh, up yeah, the contrast all, all you season. want throw some grain on it do whatever you got to anyway but but uh you got but all that went away and it actually forced me my photo my consideration of my own personal photography skills went from i thought i was pretty decent and then I became a professional, you know, professional photojournalist, whatever the hell that means now. Um, and my skills just went boom, like off the board. And I literally had two years where I didn't have anything. Luckily, when I moved to New York, Occupy Wall Street, a whole bunch of stuff happened, and I was out there day in, day out shooting. Which, man, I don't know how you do it, Doug. Like I've been applying, <laughs> I've been applying for daily photojournalism jobs and I'm like I'm not even applying for like Chicago I'm not even applying for all these places I'm like uh, maybe Wichita maybe I'll be good enough for Wichita <laughs> maybe I'll be good enough like trying to find this like oh it's a four day a week newspaper town uh, that's that's me that that's where I can start <laughs> out and I'm like <laughs> and I've shot you know it's like I've shot photo you know photo essays you know big photo essays for Al Jazeera and all these other places but the idea of having to turn out uh, you know I had a couple days, like when I, I did a big piece for Al Jazeera, uh, and I also was the investigator on it, and also a producer on the video aspect. Wow. Of it. So it was like, believe me, it was it was a fun time. Um, I mean, we won a bunch of awards for it, and it changed some, it kind of sort of changed some laws. Uh, but we, but my photos is the first time I ever worked with a photo editor, because uh, at the Village Voice, there's no photo editor. There's a art director maybe or something like that but literally they don't know anything at all I mean they're great people but they write also for the blog but that was the first time ever sending in something and just being completely and totally terrified because that was the moment that if I didn't turn in something good not only was Al Jazeera America like the premier place that I wanted to work now that you know now that Life Magazine is gone and all these other places, and I'm like, this is the place I could actually do my work and be free to do my work the way that I wouldn't be able to do at any other place. And absolutely, completely terrified, self-doubt up the wall. <laughs> and then I didn't hear back something when I sent in my first group of photos. <laughs> and like, that's always nerve-wracking, isn't I'm like, it? <laughs> I'm like, I called him up and I'm like, is everything okay? He's like, oh yeah, no. Um, you, you only sent me like 30 photos, like send me a bigger grouping because this is like a big photo essay. Like send me a bigger grouping. I want to see your wide stuff so I can select down. And I'm like, 
okay, I have no idea how to shoot with a photo editor. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it, and it doesn't. It, it doesn't help that that in this business, photo editors can be unrelentingly cruel too, and not not to be yeah. not to be cruel, like not with the intention of being cruel, but you know they just they don't pull any punches when when they see something that you that you've done that that is just crap. They'll tell you it's crap. Yeah. Um, oh, I thank I thank photo editors for that. That is like the biggest oh, me thing. Too. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I love it when they do that. I, I, I cannot grow or be better than I am if I'm not destroyed and broken down, you know, and then <laughs> rebuilt on that foundation to make myself That's better. It's how I ever grew. One of the big problems with the, the kind of the way that we critique photos now, it's comments. And, mm -hmm. you know, Instagram comments, especially since they're not layered, like the way, say, Reddit is or something like that, where you can respond to a direct thing and they're not, you know, so it's just one comment after another. Um, I don't know how anyone nowadays, you know, I've heard that Flickr used to be a place that people could go to get kind of have conversations, but I mean like without being able to do that kind of direct lay down a photo or even over the phone, like I luck I'm I'm lucky enough to have, you know, CS Muncie, one of the best photographers I know, is a is my best friend since 5th grade. So literally like I I can send him stuff and go, is this shit? Is this car oh. Is this garbage? This is an extra thing. We could swear on this one, right? Um, so, <laughs> sure. I think I think our, <laughs> now, now you, we, you make the rules, Zach. <laughs> I, th I think I use the words chicken shit. So we're uh, <laughs> we're on it now. So we're kind of like after ten o'clock cable. This is, uh, so you can say this is yes, around the sure, lens. Why not after dark? <laughs> so, but uh, but no, it's it's great to have that you know kind of close Kyoto community of I have a handful of people that go to me, like it terrifies me when I have friends of mine who are like professional, like AP photographers and like that, they're like, oh, just, you know, can you look at these photos? I just want to see if they're good or not. And I'm like, dude, you're, you, you, you're, you're getting paid like every single day to do this stuff. But it's, it's great to have that community and I think that's one of the reasons why it's especially for self-doubt, you know, it's, as any kind of photographer, that's a big problem, but especially in the photojournalism community because we're so... Maybe, I mean, you, you, you work on it with a team to some level, Doug, but, like, you know, especially freelancers, like, we're all out there against each other. I mean, it's like, shooting mm -hmm. in New York City, like, it's brutal. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say, you know, I have the luxury, or at least the people I work with have the luxury of working side-by-side side with other photographers of different experience levels. So, I mean, if you're a new a new person in this industry, you know, you have people who have been in it for 10 years sitting right next to you who you can show your work to and get critique, or you have a, a civilian personnel who's, you know, did it for 10 years in the military and has 40 years combined experience doing it who can critique your work. You know, and where I work, again, there's tons of people who can look at your stuff and give you that critique. And I don't really know how modern day, current age freelancers do it. You know, in terms of getting the critique they need to grow. Uh, if you're a guy out there who's just shooting, you know, and you you shooting your whatever you do, and you upload your stuff, you know, how are you growing? How are you you know getting critique that's going to help you grow? Constructive critique, because if you get pats on the back and you know good jobs all the time, you know you're you that's good, but you're never going to grow. And you know, there was a website I used to visit a lot back in the day called photosig.com, that's S-I-G, uh, it's subject in general, that's what it stood for. Unfortunately, it no longer exists, but it was a, an awesome website, and what was great about it was you could thumb people up, you know, you had six ratings, it was one thumb up, two thumbs up, three thumbs up, or one, two, or three thumbs down. Uh, but the thing of it is, you could only upload like one photo a day, one photo every 72 hours if you were on the free account, one photo a day if you paid for it. Uh, and that obviously forced you to only upload your very best stuff, you know? Yeah. And what was neat about the website was it worked on a scoring system so much so where you got points based on your taking the time to actually critique other photographers. So if you write a, wrote a critique for someone, you didn't get, I don't know if you got points for writing a critique, but you got points when people rated your critique. So if you saw a photograph that was like either garbage or really good or in the middle and you gave some sort of constructive critique, uh, other people could rate that critique and then you got points. And what was cool is if you got enough points, you could upload another photo. So 
I'm really sad that that website no longer exists. I mean, it was kind of outdated when it was around, and it didn't look like it had been updated in a long time. But something like that is, I think, really good for the the average working freelancer who's maybe by themselves and just doesn't get a lot of feedback. There's actually something like that that still kind of exists uh, in in a certain way, at least. So, like legs, I I think a lot of you mentioned what what young working freelancers are doing. I think. Uh, like Zach said, they're relying on sort of their the people they know to to help critique their work and mentor them. But there are also just if you know where to find them, little photo communities out there. Like uh, uh, Melissa Little, who is now the NPPA president, uh, she she has for a number of years run a photo a day, which is a small it's like a Google group community for photojournalists. Where you can share, you can share a photo a day with a group, and they uh, other people offer either they offer you know attaboys if it's a really great photo, or you know a lot of times they'll say you know this isn't really working for me you know what what could you have done differently here and it is a place where you can not always I mean a lot of times you may share an image and nobody says anything about it. But uh, which is also kind of the more nerve-wracking thing. You're like, well, did it suck, or was there was it fine? Was there just nothing wrong with it? Or, but uh, it's it's a community where I think you can get that sort of honest feedback from from other working professionals, uh, and and it operates. I mean, it's not exactly the same as as uh, the site you were describing, but it is kind of similar in that you you're only sharing one thing a day. Uh, or less than that, and and you are getting genuine, honest feedback from people who who aren't going to just try to hold your hand too. Yeah. Uh, now the other part of the topic was related to confidence. Uh, so if you read the article, it talks about how the the photographer who wrote it mentions how you know they were at a convention or they were at a you know, on a panel or something, and you know they were with another photographer, and that photographer was just basically being like all about himself and talking about how great his work was while you know the person who wrote the article was just you know very being humble just putting his stuff out there letting people critique it um, you know do you have any thoughts on confidence in general how are you when you show off your work to other people are you you know humble are you confident is there should you be confident is there a level of confidence you should show in your work um, when you're showing it off to someone obviously you want people to believe in you to the point where you know they're going to hire you, want you to photograph stuff for them, or you know obviously to get a job. Um, but you know what level is sort of okay with regard to confidence and, and being humble? Uh, well, I don't. I think it's probably it's for the most part never a good idea to be cocky about your work. Yeah. I think you can be confident in in the work you produce and and in the way you present it to people without w without being obnoxious about it, sure. Uh, like stand stand by your work, but it, but at the same time, like you you've got to take criticism about it too. You've got to take it well. You know, the most of the time, like if you are trying to get a job or you're trying to show your freelance work to somebody and they're they're offering you criticism, you know, they might not do that for everybody. You know, they might if if they see bad work, maybe they just dismiss it and, and don't offer criticism. It, it's genuine work for somebody to offer criticism of, of what you're presenting them instead of just ignoring it. So they're, they're and, and you know, just you, you can't go into this saying, well, I'm great, obviously, so, you know, they don't know what they're talking about. That's... Well, what if I am great? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, but at the same time, you've got to be you've got to be confident in the work you're showing too. Uh, you've you've got to kind of if because if you're not confident, you're not going to get hired either. Right. Um, you know, if you're like, oh, look here, look look at this portfolio. I I don't think it's very good, but can you like take a look at it? That's that's not going to get you anything either. So I think there's kind of a middle ground that has to be tread. Yeah. A lot of a lot of people I find. Um, and I've had this conversation with uh, um, a female friend of mine <laughs> about about the difference between cocky and confident is is so important. It's a, it can be a very fine line, uh, but 
but it really comes down to you know it's like how how people will perceive you. I mean, there's a lot of just having this uh, conversation about po- other podcasters um, who just come off as like cocky about their work and like it's not a confidence thing. It's not it's not like I'm confident that I know what I'm doing is correct. It's a show off and a show style. There's a certain there's a certain podcaster with a with a with a fro that uh, won't be a name that that I've always said that always comes off to me as really cocky and I just then don't end up liking his work and I can't listen to can't listen to his show at all. Um, but you know, confident people, uh, confident photographers who you know either have, have done it for years and just kind of go, look at, I'm confident in this work. You can have your opinion about it, but I'm confident on that this is at least acceptable work or uh, good work. And uh, you know, it's all it's all a line that we I think constantly have to walk on. You know, we have to, especially nowadays, we have to since it's so much. Um, personal branding and kind of like putting your stuff out there and it's no longer just showing you know like we're talking about before like just showing your photos to a couple friends who who are also photographers like you putting work up on Instagram you're putting work if you're basically putting it up anywhere on the internet now it's any asshole can come in and comment on it um, and that immediately that's the difference where if you're cocky that'll deflate you if you're confident then it'll just be that guy that's a jerk, you know, so. Yeah, I would say, you know, I've uh, been pretty humble for the most part, but I would say in my youth, I was probably more cocky with my work, especially when I thought I was all that, and, you know, I'd be like, look at and how I did. Chips. All that, that and a bag of chips, or just um, all that? Side of chips, side of side chips, not a full bag, like a sampler bag, you know, like, <laughs> uh, yeah. Not, not, yeah, so you know, a lot of air in there. Um, but I remember, you know, back in the day, you know, I'd have people, you know, who were brand new to the career field, and I'd be there. I've been, in, you know, doing it for like four years or something like that, and I'd show my work and be like, "You see, you see this exa- See this photograph? Look at that example of leaning lines. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Look at that bouquet. Look at that porch. That's an example of a great portrait right there." See, it's like I'm teaching you right now, but look at how great my imagery is. You can learn so much. Look at my shots. Um, you know, nowadays I don't really bring up my work. If if I you know if I'm ever in a position where I can provide insight or input to anyone uh, regarding their skills, I'm more talking about their work and examples of how it can be better. I, I never bring up my work or show my work. If anyone ever wants to see my work, they can go to the website I publish it on. But I don't promote myself in any way to at least people who I'm trying to teach. Now, as far as people who are, you know, trying to hire me or whatnot, yeah, of course I'll throw my website onto a, a resume or whatnot. But I'm not in a position right now where that's the case. But in the cases I have been looking for work as a photographer, I mean, I just put my work out there and present it like, here you go. Here's what I've done. Either it's going to be up to your your needs, or it's not going to be up to your needs, and you're either going to hire me or you're not going to hire me. Yeah. You know, I have people who come and see my work and they say, "Oh, I loved your stuff, and I want just like that for my wedding or my photo shoot or something." And I'm always blown away by that, blown away by the fact that anyone thinks I'm any good at all. You know, <laughs> that anyone thinks yeah. I can take a photograph and they're, you know, they appreciate or like what I've done, and that's I think good in a way in that. You know, whenever it does happen, I'm always appreciative of it. I'm not in a position or in a place where I'm going to be like, yeah, 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 I know. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, all right, yeah. Or, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, of course I'm great. Of course I'm, I'm awesome. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I've never been like that. I hope I never be like that. <laughs> it's yeah, it's interesting. You, you mentioned, you know, the sort of cockiness of being a younger photographer and – you just doing doing what I do working for a daily paper nothing deflates you quite like going at be working someplace where you you cover the same stuff year after year and you've seen it so many times and and nothing is is de- quite as deflating as coming back with a photo that you thought was just great stuff you just you, you nailed it you got a killer photo from something and you you show it to the guy next to you who's been working with the newspaper for 40 years it says, "Oh yeah, I've made that photo three or four times." Yeah. Um, <laughs> You're like, no. eh, it's all right. I 
I uh, uh, when I moved up to when I moved up to Alaska for a little while, <laughs> I uh, immediately became friends with a couple of photographers. But one uh, one guy, uh, Carl Johnson, absolutely amazing nature photographer, better than anything I could ever do. Um, and he he helped teach me the kind of the ropes of the area and brought me along on uh, you know searching for aurora borealis and and doing all that stuff. And I'd come across you know the first time I even took a photo of the aurora up there. I was just like, oh my god, this is the best thing ever, or whatever. He's like, oh yeah, 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 that's that's good. And then I go to his website, and I'm like, oh, forget. <laughs> I still like, I have one photo that like during one evening, I think I got a better shot like than he got. But like that's literally it. Like we went out a bunch of times, and and it's just like that. That going into a new. I mean, I think that's one thing too that that's super important is that that keeps your confidence at the right level and your cockiness at the right level. Is that every once in a while you got to kind of try to go into a new style of photography, try a new thing, and go into somebody else's world. Um, because as photojournalists, you know, we, we kind of, yeah, we do kind of do almost everything. Uh, but, you know, go into the world of, like, professional nature photographers uh, and watch these guys who their day job is nothing to do with photography and watch them just beat the living crap out of you shot after <laughs> shot. Like, just time after time. And it's just like, to me, it's just like, you know, it's like, oh, I'm really good at basketball when I'm playing with my friends and, like, I'm the best one on the court. Then I'm going to go to the NBAs over there. <laughs> like, and it's just like, you just get slaughtered. And, like, that was one thing, like, shooting with a couple nature photographers up there. And I'm like, I think I'm pretty good. I've done some nature photography, you know. It's, it's decent. What's, what's the complicated nature of it? I mean, I'm shooting something that's still, you know, it's, it's a landscape. <laughs> It's Aurora. What do I got to do? It's a tripod and a There's and a nobody with a gun anywhere near me. <laughs> yeah. There's no police, you know. You know and 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 you know and and most of those guys would say, "Look at I I can never do what you do." And I'm like, "Jesus, like though. I mean, obviously your photos do much much better than my photos do because more people want to see Aurora photos than they want to see, you know, protest but photography, which I understand, but it's uh that that's that's humbling. That's that's a serious humbling stuff. You know, you don't even have to go and talk to people who are necessarily better than you at photography, whatever that means. Um, but just go in a completely different field than we are. I mean, like I, I if I walk into a studio, which I I don't think I've walked into an actual studio and shot since I was in college. Just not something I've ever done. And I just literally you just I just go completely humble. I'm like I don't even know what that is. Is that a light stand or is that a tripod? I don't know. Like. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, this has uh, been our bonus topic. Again, thank you for supporting the show if you're a patron and uh, giving us some dough. If not and you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching the show anyways. Go throw us some dough anyways uh, and get these shows early. Uh, but thank you again, Doug, for your time. Zach, as always, love having you on the show, of course, because you're my co-host. I don't know why I said that. Um, <laughs> it's getting late. I need to go to bed. This has been Dave Murphy. This has been our bonus topic, and around the lens, yada, 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 and we're out. <laughs>